what is going on guys and today we're going over another video and in this one it is going to be the hardest gods to play in smite we've already done top five easiest gods for beginners to start off with um top five hardest gods to master top five easiest gods to master and now we're just going to be doing a top five hardest gods to play this means that if just anybody were to just randomly go play this god barring they they haven't mastered them obviously if you've mastered this god it's probably not going to be hard for you to play this is for anyone who is either new to the game or hasn't really played this character at all um that it's going to be a lot harder for them to be successful at uh, and number five is a wheelix the reason number five is a wheelix is because her kit is extremely unique um and what i mean by that is i'll bring up her abilities suku uh she just summons a giant panther and she rides on him giving her a big time movement speed boost 25 percent, but also her strafe is decreased big time by 50 percent. and then if you land it does damage this is what it looks like you ride on it so you can see the movement speed increase we get but if we're doing this you see how big time slow you go so unless you're moving forward you're going a really really slow now the best thing to always 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 do is cancel suku do not jump unless you're going for a confirmed kill and they're running away or you just got out of your spawn and you're starting back harpies or something like that like say this odin bot is back harpies right and i just leave my spawn and i'm running you know Go, then you can jump on the back harpies you know clear them go to your speed whatever because by then 13 seconds will be up and you'll have suku again but if you're running into battle or something or you're just running around the map do not cast suku because when you do that and you jump it resets the cooldown if you just cancel you can ride suku all over hell's creation if you want and cancel it resets cooldown i can ride suku again cancel it ride again cancel it now obviously you could see my mana getting depleted I, I, that's not a smart thing to do to just keep doing this but you're able to do that you just you know reduce mana but the second you jump, jump that's when it cancels right there and that puts you in a very bad spot because now you have no getaway that is a wheelix's only form of getaway is suku use it wisely only jump off if you're jumping over a wall to get to safety or something like that or you're chasing down or you're initiating <clears throat> her two is going to be her main source of damage but it's tricky you can see here it has an attack progression and usually that's for basic attacks like osiris or erlang but a Wheelix has an attack progression on her too. And what this means is basically all you do is flip over. It's called Feather Step. Everyone knows it. It's one of the most hard hitting early game or early game abilities in the game. It used to be number one, um, but I think they nerfed it and a Wheelix has just kind of fallen off from that. But so you flip over to last enemy hit within 1.5 seconds. You root them, you cripple them, and you deal a lot of damage so it's a really good ability the damage dealt is modified based on the next attack and a wheelix's basic attack progression so if the next attack is her third attack then she also hits all targets in the surrounding area so this is what i mean you want to flip when you have the indication to flip so don't flip now you can flip you see how that big aoe is right there that means your next attack would proc that so it's just two basics and then you want to jump one two you'd be able to flip again one two you'd be able to flip again obviously we're on cooldown so we can't show you one more time what it looks like just so you get an idea obviously you can flip after the first one you just won't be dealing as much damage and you won't be dealing damage to enemies in the area including the minions so if you hit a god and they have minions around them it'll deal damage to the minions as well so it's it's not necessary to use it on the aoe um, but again, since this is top five hardest gods to master, if you master the Wheelix, you are always using it on the AOE. So that is something you definitely have to get down. Her third ability is a line. It can go through minions. It'll deal all the minions. It's called Moonlight Charge. That's what it looks like. Pretty simple. She just sends out a ghostly image of Suku. This is the main reason a Wheelix makes this list is because you have to combo that with her alt. This is what her alt is. If you didn't know, you're like, well, what does that do? It didn't do anything it did a lot of things um but it can do more and i'll show you what it does just by popping that you get an attack speed increase and a physical power increase so i get anywhere from 30 to 70 percent increased attack speed and 20 to 60 percent increased power but so you can use that anytime let's say you're in a 1v1 versus a bastet right and she just jumps on you and you get scared so you can go ahead and pop your alt right away and go into the fight with more attack speed and more power it's a it's an 
okay way to use that ultimate but the proper way to use that ultimate is to pull somebody in now this is barring you don't have gods to help you on your team so if you're playing a conquest and your jungle oelix you want teammates to help you with your ult. So you want a Geb support to knock up, um, a Vulcan mid to knock up, a Habwa mid to knock up, a uh, Shock solo to knock up with our ultimate, something like that. Because once they get knocked up, let's say Geb were to use his knock up on this Odin, I could just hit my ult and bring him on in. Makes it a little bit easier, but we're going to take in consideration you're just solo queuing and you're not playing with an organized team comp and stuff like that. So in order to get a Wheelix's ult off, you have to rely on it yourself and that is with moonlight charge you can see well that didn't knock him up right there that's because moonlight charge only knocks up from behind so you always have to position yourself to be behind the enemy but when you're sizing them up like this they know nobody is going to turn their back to wheelix even if they're running back to their tower they're not going to just run back to their tower like this they're going to face you and backpedal and make sure that they don't turn their back to you because they know as soon as you do Moonlight Charge is coming for that ultimate. Um, so this is what it's going to look like when you actually hit it. And then I'm going to hit my ult right after. You'll see a little indicator on the god that shows you when you want to pull them in. Um, okay, so it doesn't work on the Odin bot. Let's go try this on Raw real quick, uh, and we'll show you what I mean. But basically... What makes it hard is positioning. You have to be behind them. If they're running, you can hit this thing through walls. You can hit it however you want. Um, but you got to catch them on that. And that's what makes it hard. And once you do that and you pull them in, oh, we looks will ult them and do it. So we'll show you. You can also flip over with your two. So hit one, two, feather step over your opponent, end up behind them, knock them up in the air, and bring them in with your ult. So we'll show you what All that All right, looks. Raw gave me a lot of trouble and he ended up killing me, but he's apparently glitched over here stuck, so we get a free knock-up now. Um, so now we can, we can show you what the knock-up looks like. Um, so you knock up, you get that indicator, and you pull him in. Pretty self-explanatory. You can even flip over with that. Um, so once you see that little indicator is when you know you can pull him in. That's what it looks like. Keep in mind, a Wheelix, although she is melee, she is a long melee. So you can see normally... If I were to hit a melee range, I would have to be, like, right here. Um, but because Oelix has this long weapon, I can be a lot further back. I can be all the way back here. That far away from the Odin bot and hitting him. Um, so you can hit that at opportune times. I want you to keep that in mind. That is why number five is Oelix. It's just when you don't have a team comp that relies... When there's no team comp that helps Oelix, Oelix becomes a lot harder to play. Uh, and you have to hit those knockups. And everyone knows they're coming, so it just makes her harder to master. Number four. Number four is Kronos. Now, there are a lot of reasons why Kronos is number four, and I'll start off with uh, a really basic one. Uh, by taking a look at his abilities, you can see here his one is a little area. Ground target looks like this. His two is uh, doesn't really do much. You can see his passive. Well, it does do a lot, but there's not much that you do. All you do is click a button, uh, and it does that. But you see his passive stopped on a clock. There's a clock in your passive. There's one, two, three, four. Whatever you stop on is the benefit that you get. So that's one reason it makes Kronos hard is in order to use your two, you have to be paying attention to your passive that's constantly winding around. So that means you have to take your eye off the game, off your cooldowns, off of everything to look at your passive for a split second to see what you want to stop on. And then you have to time it right with your two so it's really really tricky but what it's two does is if you land on the first section you'll heal a little bit you land on section two all of your mana is refunded on ability so if you hit the two on section two and then you hit your one and your three no mana cost if you land on section three you get a 25 percent power buff so if you were to hit your abilities after that you do a little more damage and if you hit in section four you get a 35 percent magical power contribution to basic attacks um, also on top of that, just by popping your two, no matter what you land in, you get 25% initial movement speed, plus an extra percentage over time, depending on what level you're at, plus attack speed. So by popping your two, you get movement speed and attack speed. You can see here what it looks like, the movement speed, and you get faster, a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Um, but because I landed in my one, I get a little bit of health. If I were to land in two, I get mana back, three damage for attack speed the best way to remember it is mana obviously you can tell is a little mana flask the sun think of sun fire power magical power uh the fourth one kind of looks like a little pistol so think of that as you know basic attacks pistols basic attacks and then 
by default your one is just your health that's kind of a nice way to remember it um but that is one reason why chronos is one of the hardest gods to master is no matter what that thing's constantly moving and it takes away your attention uh, and if you want to use chronos properly let's say you're low in health you got to stop on your one you want to be able to do that let's say you are building attack speed chronos and you get most of your damage from basic attacks well then you want to stop in your four so there's a different circumstance for every single time you want to use just one ability not that easy second reason he is one of the hardest gods to master is because although he's a mage he's generally attack speed mage you can build him power you can build him in mid lane and stuff like that but generally when you see chronos it's in the long lane as a hunter um, and you can see he just has pretty decent base attack speed, and then when you build some attack Time speed on him, money. like so, uh, you can see what he can burst out. And he's got that Fatalis effect when you hit an enemy god with your basic, which is really nice for a little bit, so. That's why, and then if you were to land your two on number four, you get increased basic attack damage. So, basic attacks are... I would say a cumulative one of the more harder things in smite just in general for people because when you think about it the only time you're really really focusing on basic attacks is if you're a hunter or like kali or someone like that but when you're kali or bakasura you have to be up close and personal so it's really hard to miss unless you're too far away but then it doesn't matter when you're hitting long range basics you got to take in consideration where they're gonna go where they're strafe and stuff like that so it's just not an easy thing for people to do um, so that's another reason why he makes him hard when you take into consideration his two and the fact that he's a basic attack mage for the most part not the easiest thing number three reason why he's also really hard to master is his combo now you can combo even if you're building him basic attack but if you're playing him in the mid lane or you're playing him in like rank duel generally you build a little more power than attack speed you might only build one attack speed item so in order to really do that you have to hit your combo together and this is what it is his i already showed you his one which is going to look like this it's going to do some damage it's going to do a decent amount of damage his three you're going to send out a little time rift and it's going to stun after a second so the idea is to try to get that stun off and hit your time rift right after um so the ton the stun goes out really really slow so it is harder to hit you gotta really time it or try to be up close and personal and then when you do that uh i forgot that was on instacast that was my fault but you get the idea once you do that and they're stunned you basically get a free shot for your time rift to hit and i'll try to show you again right here so that's what the combo would look like and then once they're in there ideally you can pop your two on basic attack and just go ahead and wail on them when they're stunned um so i guess if you want to get full potential you want to stun with your three hit with your one but make sure you get your two activated so you can get some damage off so it, chronos to me i don't really play chronos a lot because it's too much thinking involved for me and i know that sounds stupid because smite is one of the most thinking games uh requires a lot of knowledge but I just don't like the fact that you have to really pay attention to that passive that's what really makes them a little more difficult for me and then i'm not the best with hitting basic attacks and then you really got to chain uh your combo together heal up and stuff like that and it's just not easy to master for someone going into a, a brand new someone who's brand new in smite i would not at all recommend going into chronos right away because you're just gonna get annihilated while he can do some big time damage and he's almost unstoppable in a 1v1 he's unstoppable if you hit everything so you gotta hit everything and he's just not that easy to play his ultimate is a really good ultimate but there's a wind up time basically you just travel eight seconds into the past so if eight seconds ago you had full health and full mana and you're about to die right now pop your ultimate this is what it's gonna look like you literally go to the exact spot you were eight seconds ago so if eight seconds ago i was over here and i'll show you we'll just pop this let's go run all the way over here and then pop my ult so i'll go all the way back over here that's his ultimate but it has a wind up time so if you're about to die and you think you're gonna die you can't just pop that ult with 100 health left because you're not going to make it and you're going to waste your ultimate you have to time it perfectly so you know you can get out with just the right amount of health and get back into the team fight yet another aspect that makes chronos hard to play uh in my opinion man he's just not that easy 
not an easy guide whatsoever. On to number three. Number three is Ao Kuang. Ao Kuang, Ao Kuang, Ao Kuang, however you pronounce his name. Ao Kuang to me. Um, I don't think I really have to explain this one a whole lot. Uh, Ao Kuang is just hard. His difficulty says hard, and he is hard. Um, now, with that in mind, if you get to late game with Ao Kuang and you're doing good, GG. It's 100% GG. They're not going to win because Ao Kuang is one of the most hyper carries late game. I mean, this dude can just one shot practically anybody come late, late game. The problem is, is getting to late, late game. His early game is so atrocious. And I mean, absolutely atrocious. He has no lane clear. He has little to no camp clear. Ao Kuang's used to kill people. He is basically an assassin, but he is a mage. Um, he's one of the rarities. You do see some attack speed mages like Soul, like Kronos, like Freya. Um, but he's a melee mage. He's basically an assassin that does magical damage. Just think of it like that. Um, the reason he is so hard to play is because his early game is so bad. You're not going to be doing a lot of damage. You don't have anything to really initiate. You don't have a lane clear. His first ability is an invis. Leave behind a little trail like that. And you can explode it for damage. So it's kind of a getaway. Um, but the problem is, is people see where you go. So if I invis this way... They're going to know it. If I invis this way, they're going to know it. So the best thing to do if you're going to invis with Ao Kuang would be to go one way and then go the complete opposite way because they see your figure going this way, but you're actually going this way. So little mind games there makes them a little more difficult. His two sends out dragons. You can either throw them like that if you want, or the dragons will do extra basic attack damage. So I'll show you right here. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Basic attack damage. I do 37 to 18. If I have my dragons activated, I'm doing 37 and 18, but each dragon is going inside of them for 27 extra damage. It kind of works as like a concise or something like that. Just deal a little bit of extra damage. Uh, his three looks like that. Just sends out little things, but you can also send out uh, the dragons, I believe, or no. Okay, yeah. So when you activate your three, it'll also send out a dragon. So basic attacks make the dragons go forward and the three will make the dragons go forward. So a good combo to do uh, would be to either blink in with a blink or go invis in. Have your dragons ready beforehand. Hit them with your three. That's going to cause a dragon to go out and just basic attack on the rest of the way. Now, if they are running away, obviously you can throw your dragons and stuff like that. But Ao Kuang's ultimate, if you didn't know, uh, he just goes up into dragon form and executes somebody. You'll know when their execute is available because they'll have a little health bar decreased. Um, but if their execute isn't available, you can still alt and it's just going to look like this. You'll still be CC immune. You'll just toss them in the air. You just won't actually complete the execute. Uh, now, completing the execute, I'm going to assume... Actually, you know what? I'll show you what an execute will look like anyway. I was going to say I'm going to assume you know what it is on Ao Kuang, um, but in case you don't, I'll go ahead and show you. Ao Kuang would be the number one hardest god in Smite if he didn't have this ultimate. This is what makes him number three. So, weeding him down here. That's the execute. That X right there indicates that you can execute him. Now, this is what it's going to look like. You're just going to eat him, kill him, heals you for a little bit, uh, and now you can go wherever you want on the map, essentially. So I want to go all the way over here to safety, and now I'm safe. That's the only reason he's number three and not number one, is because he does have an execute that allows you to get away really, really easy. It's not like Thanatos' execute where you have to go into the fight. You're literally getting away from the fight. So, But when you take in consideration, he has one of the worst, if not the worst, early game. He has no clear. He has no um, lane clear, no camp clear, nothing really. He has no real early game potential. You just kind of have to coast and live until you get to late game. And then you're just obliterating people. You're obliterating people if you're hitting your abilities. And Al Kuang is just not... His abilities aren't easy to hit because he is close range you got to get up close to personal you can be invisible and catch people off guard the problem with doing that is now you have no getaway so i mean he does a lot of damage but the problem is is 
is actually confirming that damage and getting to the point where you can get that damage off. So that's why Alquang is number three, hardest god to play, man. He's a really amazing god, but it takes so much to get him online. And that's that's why he's number three. On the number two. Number two is the Morgan. Now, this one again should be self-explanatory for a couple reasons. One, because I had numerous people in my Hardest Gods to Master video saying that Morgan should have been on there, and she was very, very close to making that list. Um, but because of that, I'm just gonna throw her in Hardest Gods to play, um, and she's number two. And there's a couple reasons for that, but the big, big, big reason is, we'll get into that right now, is her ultimate. While her ultimate is very good, it's very hard to utilize, and it has a 160 second cooldown, you can see. Basically, what her ult does is she just turns into an enemy, or any god in the game. You have nine options to choose from, uh, well, you could have nine. If you guys have the exact same team comp you're facing, you're only going to have four options to choose from. But you can have up to nine options to choose from, and you just switch into the enemy god. Do so, say, you copy their abilities, you copy their build, you copy everything. Literally everything about him. For a short period of time. And then you go back to Morrigan. So, just to actually make use of your alt, you have to know every god in the game, practically. If you're if you're transforming into a Xing Ten and you don't know how to play Xing Ten, well, then you wasted an ultimate. So, you gotta know the gods, basically, and if you're playing an enemy team that has five gods that you don't know how to play, well, you're screwed. Um, keep in mind, it is 160 second cooldown, too, so you have to use it wisely you have to know who to turn into and when to turn into him. If there's an enemy Anubis running away and he is a goner and you got a Loki on your team, you can switch to Loki real quick and try to catch up and alt him. If there is a team fight going on and there's a Ra on the other team and you have an Athena, right? And Athena's like, hey, I'm going in. Well, you want to switch to Ra real quick, get your snipe ready so when Athena taunts the team, you can snipe them. You have to be one step ahead of everyone else to know when to transform and who to transform into. So that alone makes Morgan super, super hard. Uh, in fact, her difficulty in Smite says very hard. Only God that does that. Every God says either easy, average, or difficult, or hard, whatever it is. Morgan is very hard, so that right there tells you all you really need to know. Her kit isn't the easiest thing either. Her one is a really, really useful ability. It's called Deadly Aspects. It makes Mirage copy uh, a copy of you, and it stuns someone whenever you hit them. So now he's stunned. Two is a lane clear. Just looks like that. But whenever you do that, you see that little hourglass above them. That means the next ability that hits them is going to deal extra damage. You can see here. So you launch Wave of Dark Magic, hitting abilities, deal bonus damage to minions, and applies an omen for 8 seconds. Gods with an omen will take bonus damage the next time they are hit by a damage ability. So my one, you see, does 103 base damage. Now if I were to hit my two, and then my one, which we'll see right here. So we go from 103 to an extra 31. So you can see the damage it does there. Her three really 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 strategic ability it's an invis um but not the best invis it's called confusion this is what it does you send out a mirage of yourself and she just runs to the nearest enemy god um so you have to really really use that strategic you can use it as a getaway because you do get movement speed up to 40 percent but if you want to use morgan correctly Save your alt for when you pretty much know you can confirm a kill or you need to get out. And then play Morgan as a very, very sneaky uh, player. Not like a mage. Player like an Alquang Loki hybrid. Like player like that. Because if you can send out a decoy and just throw people off and they don't know what's happening. And they see this you running at you, right? And he's like, oh shit, he's coming. And you can come around another angle, hit him with this, stun him out. And if you have Polynomicon and you get that 3-1 combo stunned basic attack. And keep in mind with Morgan's passive, the third hit will explode dealing extra damage. So we'll see here. One, two. That's the three hit. It's going to deal extra damage like that. If you have your two, one, basic attack, Polynomicon and your passive 
game over. They are not surviving that late game, so you can really be strategic and sneaky with this oh, with this invis. It can be played right. into big time. You could even use that to blink in and just completely surprise them and catch them off guard. But the main reason that Morgan is number two is that alt. Complete game changer, but her kit also isn't the easiest thing. She does have lane clear, which makes her a little bit easier to play. You don't have to worry about clearing lane. Um, but to really utilize her and just play her correctly, it's hard. And if you want to even play her... It's not a good idea to play Morgan until you know everybody else because you might get thrown into a situation where your ult is utterly pointless because you don't know what you're doing. Morgan's number two, on to my opinion, the number one. I will say that Morgan very, very easily could have been number one. It was kind of a toss-up between one and two, but I think you'll understand why I chose number one to be number one. And number one is Hell. One of my favorite gods in Smite, but man, when I play Hell, two things happen. I either go 1 and 10 or 20 and 0. There's no in between. I either shit the bed or make everybody run in fear. Um, and that's because hell is really, really hard to play. When you're playing hell, two things are going to happen. The game's either going really, really well or the game's either going really, really bad. And that's because there is so much that comes with hell. She is a stance changer, which means she has six abilities because her ult is the stance change. So she has no ultimate. Keep that in mind. So a little bit easier, but... When you have six abilities, that's obviously makes it more harder. Now, when you have three abilities that do damage and three abilities that heal, not only do you have extra abilities to account for, but you have an extra roll to account for. So, in Hell's Damage Stance, here's our abilities. You can read through that. There's a lot to go through, so I'm not going to read it all. If you want to, you can pause it right now. Okay. Now, with that being said, when you're in her Damage Stance, it's it's self-explanatory they hell used to be more of a support solo lane type of god even though she couldn't really work in either of those roles that's the only one she could kind of do now they switched her so she's a mid laner and, and she can clear wave good and she's a true mid laner i would say but her one's gonna look like this does damage it'll go through minions and explode at the end of the range if you don't hit a god or it'll explode as soon as you hit a god so if i'm really close to him it'll explode as soon as i hit him the two is going to be a little thing like this it's going to slow down the enemy uh, if i'm correct yeah so the dark debuff is going to slow them and it uh reduces their protection so it reduces protections by up to 25 and slows them by up to 40 percent so you got a nice lane clear that does a little bit of aoe uh, and a slow debuff that you got to use very strategically because if someone's running away, you can use it to slow them down. Or you could also place it at your feet if someone's chasing you to speed you up a little bit. Your three is going to deal big AoE damage. It's going to look like this. It's just going to send out a pulse of damage like that. Nothing much to it. Um, yeah, all it does is the damage, but it does a lot of damage. And I will say this, if you're playing hell, you might as well go all in and be really really cheeky and buy blank because come late game second item get aegis or b's first item but second item get blank because when you get hit by this a full damage hell late game that's over you're automatically below half health and you gotta run especially if you're a squishy so it's really disgusting her ultimate obviously is just changing the stance so you got all of her damage abilities down. Not the most complicated thing, a relatively self-explanatory lane clear. Um, but if you hit a god, it's going to explode. So it can be body block, keep that in mind. A slow and some AOE damage. Uh, but she's very, very immobile as you can see. They can get caught out easy. That's another reason she's hard to play is you get caught out. Now, if you don't want to get caught out, you want to be using your healing a little bit more because her one heal is going to do damage if you hit enemy minions. I don't think it does damage on gods. It might. Okay, so it does still do damage on gods. In fact, let's read through this. So, that hit, okay, it hits gods only. So if you use your one and your light stance through minions, it's gonna do nothing. Um, but you hit an allied god, it heals that god and heals hell on a successful hit. So let's say you hit an enemy god with this. It's just gonna do damage. That's it. You can't hit minions. You can only hit an enemy god. However, if you were to hit an ally god with this, say Ra was on my team and he was getting low health, boom, I hit Ra. It's going to heal Ra for a little bit and it's going to heal me for a little bit. 
pretty good heal there. Her two is gonna look like the same thing as it did in Dark Stance, obviously, but it's gonna be lighter. And this is used to break CC. So this is, I would say, one of the more harder aspects to hell because if you're playing hell correctly, you have to really use the CC wisely. Um, it's good for you. Let's say Athena's coming in at you and you're like, oh shit, here comes a taunt. Drop it on you real quick. And if she taunts you, it's going to do nothing because you're CC immune. Now, if there's an Ares on your team and Ares blinks in and gets all five of you and none of you have beads and you are just sitting there and you're like, well, shit. Get your team together. Get all five of your teammates together. Say, hey, group up. Boom. CC immunity. All five of them are not affected by Ares alt anymore. So you have to use Hell in her light stance very, 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 very strategically. Now, her three is going to kind of be like a repulse you see in dark stance it was this and light stance it's just a heal it's not going to do any damage to anybody it's just going to heal yourself and heal allies but you get movement speed as well so this is the only movement speed or getaway she has in her kit and it's by healing yourself and you get a 25 percent movement speed now you pair this with something like shield of regrowth and then you'll get even more movement speed when you heal yourself so that is a good combo to keep in mind um but the reason Hell is the hardest god to play, um, she's a stance changer, which always throws people off. Not only is she a stance changer, she's a stance changer, where in one stance she deals buku amounts of damage and can slow their enemy and debuff them. And then in the other stance, she does virtually no damage and is used just as a healer and to cleanse teammates of CC. So you have to be in an attack mindset to deal some damage. And in a squishy support mindset to free your enemies or free your allies and heal them and stuff like that. All while you're super immobile and super squishy and probably going to be one of the most focused gods in the game because of everything that I just mentioned. That is why Hell is number one. This didn't take very long to go over Hell because in my opinion she's just self-explanatory. She's freaking hard. I love her. But man, she is not easy to play. That is going to wrap it up guys. If you enjoyed this whole video be sure to drop subscribe. Or drop a like and hit subscribe for more content like this. And let me know in the comments what you think your hardest gods are to play and smite. Not hardest to master. Um, not hardest. Just hardest to play. Just if you go in, it's just like, man, what am I doing? So I want to see your guys' list. And until next time, peace.